Thanks for coming. And I thought today, I'm just going to make one up again, I think. So this is just clean water going on to my Fabriano watercolour page. It weighs 130 pounds, 15 by 11. And I'm using the large Ron Ransom Hake. And this is a bit of light red. More water, a bit too dry that is. More sienna. Seeing where the uh, where it takes me really. Just clean the brush there. And I'm just going to go light red and a bit of lemon yellow. A bit more water. Light red, lemon yellow again. Just want to get a sort of orangey colour. I need sort of darker colours in there, so I'm introducing um, some ultramarine just to uh, stick a bit of burnt umber in there as well. That's what that looks like. I mean, if you like, you can test this out on some scrap paper by the side if you like. In fact, I'd recommend you do that if you if you're just starting out. I tend to just test it out on the paper as I'm going along. More red, a bit more red, a bit more blue. Put that in there. And that'll be a sort of a sort of um, light reflecting off the water. Uh, blue. More uh, brown, blue, and let's, let's just pop some clouds in. Something like that. Uh, take a piece of tissue, let's stick some clouds, let's stick some white clouds in there as well. Done simply, just a pit of tissue. And off that come. And then obviously the cleaner the tissue, the, the more paint you'll bring off. I often like to try and keep it sort of, so I use a dirty, dirty bit of, bit of tissue. So it doesn't take quite as much off, so it's more sort of subtle cloud effect. Okay. Yes. You try and restrain yourself, don't overdo it. If you don't want to take off everything you've just done. It's nice to, it just adds a bit of, bit of texture to the sky. That's it, I'm not doing more than that. I'm going to the stretch side, so I'm just going to pull it tight and refix with my little clips there. You can stretch it before you start to paint if you want, I'll just do it as I go along. Um, well, I'll just give that a very quick dry. Take you to some of those sky colours again. In fact, all of them. Just get them all back on the brush. I didn't mean to clean the brush then, I, just, I dropped it in the water by accident. And then I'm gonna pop some big mountains up there, a bit more water. The more water, the easier it comes off the brush. Big one up there. Just 
light in this area down there. Bit of clean water just to just to lighten it and then you just a bit of tissue to clean this paint up. Also helps create sort of a misty valley type of look. I mean, I'm trying not to get it all in a line. Let's get it to random shapes. Let's see what that looks like in a bit. I'm just going to give that a quick draw. Tree, like a tree line. So I'm just going to go lemon yellow, and a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of ultramarine in there as well. And just sort of, I'm just going to sort of stick it up like that, so it looks like a load of trees. Clean your brush, just go back to a lighter colour. So a bit of, bit of raw sea in there. A lemon yellow. Sort of grass up the side of the mountain. And I think that's going to be sort of start of a river that sort of flows down. Just fair in the colours I come down, come down the side there. Yeah. Now yeah, I'm just going to sweep round. So up to the edge of the water and the water sort of sweeping around like this. And make it nice and dark at the bottom. Dipping the tips on a nice chisel edge now just to get the uh, work these river banks just to define their shapes better. Chisel edge, a nice dark colour. I'm going burnt umber and ultramarine. So just open it up a bit. It doesn't matter. I like to like smaller things. It gets wider as it comes out the bottom. I've made it a bit narrow, but that's all right. It's just darken a bit more down there. It's just burnt on I'm adding onto the colour just to darken it. Too wet, you'll have to wait for it to dry because these will just fill straight back in. Yeah. I can just about get away with it. I'll put it on fairly thick, so 
I can pop these rocks straight in. Yeah, sort of do them at an angle, it looks as if you're going, going down the hill. Slightly overdone it, I think. I'm going to paint those ones out. If I paint. Just paint them out where you've gone a bit too mad. And then, why not? Just make sure it's flat first. And I'm just going to see if I can get a little cabin in there. Um, so what a nice dark area. Uh, somewhere around. Just make sure that's nice and dark. Not do. So just take a little piece of card. First the roof, then the side, and then in the end. That'll do, that's all it needs. And maybe even a, like a little, little fence. Gives a little, just the idea of something going on there in the uh, in the distance. Um, pop the eight down in the, in the board, so I don't think I'm going to need that again. Um, and I might just stick, stick two or three birds in the sky, just to have a bit of, a bit of wildlife. Pick a, a light there, uh, just making sure my hands, my hands clean. It's not clean, but as long as it's dry, it'll be all right. No birds up there. What well, I might do? Well, that's still wet. It's still wet, so I'm just going to scrape me, scrape me nail in with the card on it. Call that one finished. Uh, let's see what it looks like with the mounts on. So here's our painting with the mounts on. So the sky had quite a variety of colours, but predominantly a sort of raw sienna, light reddy, yellowy, orangey type colour, and then going in with the darker ultramarine and burnt umber to create these darker areas, which were then bit of tissue to take out the clouds to give that illusion of clouds just floating around on the sides there these earls are mating just put it in one continuous tone I was actually going to take a bit out with the with a dry brush and I just totally forgot all about it if I'm honest when I took a, took a bit of the base out with the tissue not only does it create a sort of misty look in the sort of mountain valley type thing, but it also helps the trees show up because these wouldn't have shown up. See, look, see here where they haven't done it. See the difference between the sort of contrast you get here and there. And then the tree line just sweeps all the way across. And just below the trees we've got our little little cabin just took out just using a piece of piece of plastic card to take it out just have to make sure you get the background in nice and dark just so that you get that nice contrast and then also just scraped out a few fence posts as well either end 
lots of dark, added plenty of ultramarine just to get it really dark in this foreground. Really helps show up the light showing in the in the river. And also the scraping the rocks and it gives that effect of the light just catching the rocks as the light's flooding through. So that's another one done. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy what you watch. You can also help me by liking, sharing and commenting on the videos. Keep practicing. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.